Alright, tips and tricks for Crisis 2 multiplayer. I'm going to share some things that I've picked up along the way as I've played this game. I'm going to start off with some basic stuff here. A lot of it's true for most online shooters. And the first thing is keep an eye on your radar. Whenever an enemy fires his gun off, he'll show up on the radar unless he has a silencer. And as you progress, you'll unlock a module that you can use called um, Proximity Alarm, I think. And it'll cause those bars on the side to light up red when an enemy is in the area. So keep an eye on that. Next is use burst fire with most of the weapons. Some weapons are different, but for the most part you want to use burst fire instead of just spraying all over the place and not hitting anybody. Also with the aiming, um, you want to aim just a little bit low because the bullets generally hit right above the iron tip, as you can see on the screen right now. So keep your aim just slightly low of where you want to hit them. Alright, for your grenades, you want to double tap Y to pull out your explosives. A lot of people start playing this game and I can hear them on there saying, how the fuck do I use my grenades? Well. Double tap Y and that brings out your grenades. Also, your grenades will blow up in your hand or next to you, so stay clear of those. But grenades from a grenade launcher or a rocket launcher will not blow up by you or by your allies. So if you see a dud, that's why. Alright, this next tip is true for basically any shooter you're going to play, and it's don't sit in one spot for too long. If you sit there too long, people are going to figure out where you're at, and they're going to come take you out. So if you find a spot you like, and you're sniping or whatever you're doing, get a kill, maybe two, and then move. Don't stay there, because you'll die. Just like I am on the screen right now, but hey, I had to get some footage to go along with this, so whatever. It's making that guy happy, right? Next is dog tags. Dog tags are your kill streak rewards for this game. Um, when you kill someone, they'll drop the dog tag, and then you have to walk over it to pick it up. Now, if you don't think you're going to get three or more kills before you die, you can just leave that dog tag sitting on the ground. Because you're the only one that can pick it up, and it'll stay there for a little while. So, if you go get a kill, then die, and then get two more kills, you can pick all three of them up and get your kill streak reward. On some maps, one of those rewards is a Ceph gunship that you can call to attack the enemy team. Um, those can be shot down, so if somebody calls it on you, you can shoot it out of the sky. Alright, there's a couple things to say about stealth. The first is you can only assassinate somebody while you're cloaked. So don't try to do it unless you're cloaked. The next is if you fire your weapon or you get shot while you're cloaked, you'll instantly be dropped out of the cloak and lose all of your suit energy, which makes you vulnerable. So if you're getting into a fight or you're about to shoot somebody, drop out of cloak. Now if you're switching straight from cloak to armor, you have to give it like a half a second before you shoot or else you'll still lose all your energy. So don't pull that trigger the same time you press the left bumper. One thing to remember about being cloaked is that you lose energy fast when you move. So if you're cloaked, it's best to try to sit still as much as possible. And you're still visible while you're cloaked though. If you're harder to see, but don't think that they can't see you. If you're standing out in the open and you're cloaked, they're going to spot you. And the last thing I'm going to say is try to get into a habit of cloaking when you have to reload your weapon. Armor. Armor is a make or break for this game. You definitely need to get into the habit of using it whenever you get into a firefight. Personally, I keep my left index finger over the bumper and the trigger at the same time so that I can hit them both simultaneously. Um, it does drain suit energy slowly though. Nothing like the cloak, but it will drain it. Also, it makes you very visible because you'll be glowing when you're in it. And it slows you down so you won't be able to power slide or sprint very fast or anything like that. So you definitely need to know when to use it. You don't want to be running around the whole map in armor all the time. Um, one of the other benefits is it reduces fall damage. So if you're taking a high fall and you think you're going to die, turn that on. You'll probably survive. And if you're at full health and you're in armor mode, one grenade will not kill you. It'll take more than that. So if somebody chucks a grenade at you and you can't get away, hit that left bumper. The visor. Easily the most underappreciated aspect of this game. Press up on the d-pad to activate it, and besides using it as binoculars, you can spot and mark enemies by holding the crosshair over them for a moment. When you do this, everybody on your team can see where they are, and if anybody kills them, you'll get experience for it. So if you're on a big map and you see somebody on the other side that you can't hit, spot and mark them, and you'll probably get some points. If you press down on the d-pad, you'll activate nano vision. And most people don't use this, and I'll admit there wasn't a whole lot of reason to do it until the last... Um, DLC pack that introduced the smoke grenade. Nano vision makes it a lot easier to see people through a smoke grenade, so keep that in mind. Other than that, you can use it as a night vision if you want. There's not a whole lot of places to do that though. And that's about it. Really, its best use is seeing people through a smoke grenade, so get in the habit of doing that. One of the 
of the best things about the nano suit is how much mobility it adds to the character compared to most shooters. If you hold down the jump button, you'll do a high jump. You can use this to get around more easily, or you can use it as an evasive maneuver in a fight. If you hold down the B button or a circle button on PlayStation while you're sprinting, you'll do a power slide. You can use this to get under small ledges, or also as an evasive maneuver. If you really want to confuse your enemy, you can combine the power slide with the power jump and get right behind them. This is fun to do, but it is going to take some practice to know when the appropriate time to use these moves in a fight is going to be. Trying to do a power slide when the enemy's already got their sights on you, or doing a high jump when there's a ceiling above you is going to get you killed. Another move you can do is called Air Stomp, which is actually a suit module you have to have equipped to do it. A lot of people don't use Air Stomp because they don't think it does anything, but most of these people just don't know how to use it. The first thing you need to know is that you're not going to kill anybody with it unless you're higher than a high jump. An Air Stomp gains strength as you fall, so the higher you are the better. Now another thing that's just as important is being in armor mode makes Air Stomp a lot stronger. You're also going to want to land with the person you're trying to hit in front of you because the people behind you are probably going to survive and kick your ass, kind of like that guy just did to me. Air Stomp's tricky to get the hang of, but it's a great move once you do, especially for game modes like Crash Slate where everybody gathers in the same spot. A lot of you probably thinking, what the hell does that mean? Well, I'll tell you. For starters, Crisis 2 is a very vertical game. Most of the maps have far more than one level, so try to use more than one level. And be mindful that other people are probably doing the same. You can also swim in Crisis 2, which is a great way to get from one point to another without being detected. A lot of the maps also have objects within them that you can use to kill people, like exploding red barrels, power kicking cars. Try to be mindful of your environment and what you can use to your advantage. It doesn't have to be objects either. Things like shadows or hearing people behind you if you use surround sound, all those little details can really give you an advantage if you pay attention. Now my last and one of the most important tips I'm going to give is find alternate routes. There's no need to run out into open high traffic areas and get yourself killed if you don't need to. Let's say you were playing this map and wanted to get to a crash site that was on the other side. Now if you go down the street you're probably going to run into somebody and die. So instead, go to the left, down here, use your cloak, go down the stairs, hug the left, and you made it to the other side. You might run into somebody with that route, but it's far less likely than going down the street. In most games, people tend to flock to the same areas. If you can recognize where those areas are and use the low traffic areas to get to them, you can get the upper hand. I'm going to end this video with some of the lesser known spots that I found myself. If you know any more, feel free to post them as a response. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.